me it's myself. Not the park reason. And uh, of course I'm a bit the opposite of the previous speaker in that uh, I'm more of the very high tech way of doing things. Although what we do know is that the moon landings are taught as anything is that low tech works really well. It's a 400 year old technology and it's actually what we're going back to now because uh, space probes take a total complex and there's too much to go wrong. So I'm probably not helping matters too much by uh, getting involved in nanotech. That's the way things are going. So, anyway, nanotech has been around for a long time, as I'm sure you know. And it's been going well in the bio and the quantum world. And it's only now it's coming of age in what's called um, nano machines, which are um, scaled down versions of real life machines that will work in what's going on in practice rather than just in theory. And my own part, I have just uh, made the um, first axial flow micro turbine generator, which. Uh, is uh, the only one working still in the world. And uh, Ireland is actually well posed for nanotech because it's based in integrated circuits and bio. I've seen this from uh, work I did with Mark Sharp and Dorma on making um, porous foil for packing tabs. And there's uh, great things up coming in at Ireland also in the area of implanted biosensors, which can monitor drug levels and control release. So, thankfully, the dystopian ideas of uh, nanotech didn't work out which was uh, nan bots going to take over the world by reproducing themselves from the atoms about them. It turns out, as I found, and as I'm explaining through the slides, that um, atoms in real small scale structures come up against what's called very strong scaling forces, which is they, they occur the reverse of very uh, strong scaling in the normal area. So uh, I'll explain that more when we go on to the slides. And, Nanotech anyway, as I will show you, is basically working on the level of a few hundred nanometers. It isn't a one nanometer, it's going to be a few hundred nanometers. And the nanotech I did was in MEMS, which is the micro electrical mechanical systems. And I made these borrowing from the world of integrated circuits. So that's uh, masking and 3D prototyping, which has since become 3D printing. So uh, the idea is to scale down conventional machines so that they work in, in terms with the integrated circuit industry, which have been following what's called Moore's Law, doubling density every 18 months, and now at three teraflops per trip. So there's a long way to go. And MIT are perhaps the leaders in this, in that they are making these uh, turbine machines that are the same size of a coin, but can produce enough energy to power mobile devices, which are always increasing in their energy functions and needs. But battery uh, technology is not keeping up. So, unfortunately, they have come up against uh, some issues as well, in that uh, their machines are not doing what they thought because of this uh, scaling issue we were telling you about. And that's it. it. It turns out that you get the, um, basically, the, when you scale down the largest parts of the device, it's pretty easy to do. But scaling down the smallest, the most crucial parts of the device, like the bearings and the vents, are proportionally inversible, much more difficult. And uh, the big problem that they're having is that um, it's a burning or combustion, as we normally understand it, is it occurs at an inverse rate on a small scale. So it becomes like lighting a match in a wind tunnel, trying to keep the power going. One of these little um, devices that could entirely power your mobile phone for a month, just one charge of using gas. So, my, my device basically tried to overcome some of these problems by being a axial flow device, so it only used the air pressure in the actual depth region. So I made the first three-dimensional nano machine instead of being on a planar level, so you get to a volume. 
and you got to deal with the actual flow, it's going through the device and it does it can utilize the air pressure much more. It can also work for monitoring the environment and ambient air flows. And then allow finally it's not showing it out. Just uh, on the lower side here is the um, turbine glass. These are the electroplated coils. These are examples of uh, nanotech. This is a uh, bucket bowl from the full system. The specifications on the device are there. Uh, always um, these devices, they run at a very high level. And they occur what we call the scaling goals, very high friction. So they have to turn at an enormous rate to a million times the limit. So I'll show you shortly. And the uses for this is, um, well, actually one of the biggest uh, wonders for it is the military, because they're very interested in generating electrical energy without heat, which means that there's no footprint, so it can be detected. And much more nicer uses in um, aeronautics and the cooling of chips, which we're getting forever hotter because of the increased um, density that they are made at. So, uh, Thorley and I were uh, one of the current early funders, and they wanted to uh, know about the airspeed for the air missiles so that they would have uh, one of them too. So these are examples of gun uh, machines. Environmental monitoring. So that's the uh, machine itself. Um, it's a three dimensional stacked arrangement. It uh, has these uh, coils and the rear magnets, so it produces an enormous amount of power for its size. It's built very high energy, high energy density. And this is a finished device. Um, I'll show you these um, actual turbines in here next. The uh, process for making the device is a uh, laser machine. It's actually the only method that will work at that level. So this is a sort of, not to scale, this is an enormous laser like the size of this room. And um, it's basically controlling the beam all the way through. And so what they tell you about lasers is not quite so. They, they, they are more like a big torch rather than a really confined source of light. But it's already nice if you need them. Very expensive optics. And to balance out the beam so that uh, it burns in a perfect square. By the time you get down to there, so you're bouncing up all the light. So, taking from the integrated circuit industry, you use these 2D structures, which are made out of the uh, four doses, and you turn this into a 3D structure using the laser machining of each part. That's the, uh, what I'm told about there, that is actually a uh, micro turbine. Each one of these blades has been formed using the uh, nanotechnology. And this is the nanotechnology side of it. This is a uh, 100 micrometers. That's a uh, 100 thousand something. And you can see here, this is 200 micrometers. This is like a fifth of the thickness of a page of uh, one of your books there. Each one of these lines here is formed by a pulse of laser light, which is uh, controlled and stepped across each time. Then, because of the, um, the small scale of these machines, you need um, things like um, neutron scattering to check that they are, they are internally what you think they are and want them to be. So that's the neutron scattering side of it. This is just to say that Ireland has the know-how for all this. As in in um, Tidal Institute in Cork, I uh, took the machines to do the characterization on them. And um, this is a vibration barometer in uh, Cork, very high tech machine to me measure the uh, effects of vibration. And this is just looking at the vibration in and out of the plane. Because um, if you've got a standard machine like uh, one of your vehicles or cars, what one millimeter out of the plane for your uh, wheels will, will not be a big problem. But if you've got a nano machine, that, that's a horrendous problem because the, the, the dimensions are already so tiny. So you need to really uh, watch the, the number of racing in the way you don't want. So if you have like a, a, an enormous um, rotational space, 
flow measure down in pork, is use of uh, gas flow. Well, at 80 liters a minute there. The power output is very high as well, between two milliwatts, uh, 100,000 pounds per amp, but it covers you uh, five of a billion pounds per minute. And uh, down in pork as well, they're uh, making all these feed technologies which can uh, store organic chemical fingerprints. And other research is going on over in um, and actually earlier we're a leader at the moment because you are thinking that the batteries that will be double the density and uh, half the size and twice the be able to be charged twice as quickly. This is all made possible by nanotechnology because it makes to be in small surface areas so you can make um, very, very dense um, anodes with the positive part of the battery. Um, Cambridge competitor as well, which of course Cambridge claims to invent everything, so they're, they're trying to use graphene. And we heard a lot about graphene as well as being the original nanotechnology, but no one has ever succeeded at making it into a large enough structure. Uh, it's, it's still being pursued, and of course this is going to revolutionize everything in electric vehicles, mobiles, and what's called power wall, which is a storing of peak power in your home for years later. Also going on in America's use of uh, nanocrystals, carbon and and gallium selenide, and they, they basically you can be used to paint, they can be able to paint on the um, surfaces, and it will, it will um, generate an electrical electricity. So the idea is to build a smart, sustainable, inclusive society for um, everyone. And so one of the things I'm also interested in, as uh, we heard earlier with Roger, is um, doing, um, using now technology for improving the, the way um, gas is um, cleaned up, stored, and made available for the public use. So, uh, we're doing this with nanotechnology is the uh, metro organic um, framework which is really, again with the big currency of the nanotech is the ability to make a huge uh, en uh, energy from the um, vast um, surface area that can be produced which is um, it's basically 10 times higher than um, can be drilled over the charcoal which is uh, also Material. So you've got an enormous area to store to attract gas molecules, and uh, the, the target is to uh, basically try to get a, a third of the energy that you get from gasoline. Yeah. So I'm also interested in the future of biofuel and uh, ways to make um, carbon nanotubes and nanoparticles, which is an area that's been going on for a long time, but uh, is now very much in need as a way to store gas and also to produce it. And so one of the holy grails of this is um, biocopene, which is now being researched on and has an absolute market ready to go. It's ways of using bacteria as in the same as methane production, but to control them.